hear me? Hello. Hello, long time. I think you can hear me and I can hear you. That's good. Okay, cool. Can anyone else hear us? Yeah, I hope so. Throw some emojis uh, in the space if you can hear us. Yeah, yeah. You did previously throw some more. Yeah. Some emojis for us. Um, well, at least we can hear each other. Okay, Kirsten. There we go. So that's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, how have you been? Very Gosh. good. I've been traveling, so I've been a little bit quiet and very tired from spending far too much time on airplanes. But Oh, yeah. But you're life. back from the future. I'm back from the future. Uh, it's very nice. Not a lot going on, but looks good. Promising. I see. Okay. So at this you're now with, with us in, 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 in the now. Um, so we have we have a lot of a lot of great topics to discuss today, and we have a lot of great questions. Um, so we will get started. So let's start with a few development updates. Um, uh, first of all, uh, don't tell anyone, but the bridges are actually live right now on mainnet. The bridges are live. Yeah, the bridges are live, uh, and uh, we're currently doing some uh, post-release, post-production testing. Uh, they do work, right? Uh, but we are still kind of in this, uh, uh, you know, early phase of uh, uh, you know testing that everything is okay. Uh, so please, first of all, use them at your own risk and uh, uh, use uh, relatively small amounts for your first transfers. Um, uh, we are going to uh, be testing them in like kind of this uh, silent mode without major announcements for a couple of days. So until we're sure uh, that they're working, uh, I'm positive there will be a lot of questions uh, initially on uh, all kinds of uh, details on how to use them and uh, what and why and when, um, which is great. Um, and. Um, uh, once we are confident that everything is fine, uh, then we will uh, publish a kind of more official announcement to their life. Uh, but their life, <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a great uh, great accomplishment. Um, uh, you will notice that we only support for now for uh, for uh, assets from Ethereum, uh, Dai, uh, USD. Uh, T WBTC, right? And I think it's. Uh, what is it? USDC as well. Let me see what else we, we support it. Um, but uh, one of the things that we're also going to do in the coming uh, couple of days is publish instructions on how you can uh, deploy your own bridge if you want to. And uh, uh, ah, and Ethereum. Sorry, not USDC. Uh, Ethereum wrapped, wrapped Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum itself. Uh, USDT and Dai. It's the it's the four uh, assets currently supported by the bridge. And uh, you will be able to roll out your own bridge and uh, uh, you know have any ass other assets that you would like uh, brought from Ethereum to be implemented. Um, Probably, maybe in the future we will support more tokens, but for now that's uh, that's what it's going to be. Um, you know, the, there is a, a, obviously a, a, always the issue of uh, Ethereum uh, relatively high gas price uh, and it's constantly changing. Uh, so uh, that will probably uh, be an issue like when you move uh, assets back from being to Ethereum, uh, but uh, I think it should be fine. Now, um, the second important development update is that uh, we're, we have started a uh, kind of closed beta testing for the DEX on DAPnet. And uh, closed means that uh, the most updated version is not available in the kind of uh, general store. It's uh, deployed on the publisher key. And we have a group in Telegram for anyone who wants to test uh, DEX. Uh, just send me a DM uh, that you want to join, and you will join. Uh, quite a few people already did so. And um, uh, it's very important for us to receive uh, feedback 
and uh, comments and the uh, notes from uh, somebody willing to invest, uh, you know, uh, some time in playing with it, testing it. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, very, very important to iron out the small uh, issues and the uh, UI uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, bugs, problems, things that are not, are not clear enough or do not work well. Uh, the contracts will, will will be okay. Like I'm not worried about that. I think most of the co like issues might be cosmetic, uh, but it's important for us to test it. So if you are um, uh, willing to participate and you have some time to spend, and uh, uh, it will greatly help us and the community uh, to kind of uh, fix all the small issues before we do the official rollout. And once uh, we we feel that we have. Uh, fixed all the glitches, then we will obviously deploy it on uh, mainnet as well. Now, another application that's already available on DAPnet is the Asset Minter, um, you know, previously known as Scam. It's not a scam anymore. It's, it's a real thing. It's an Asset Minter. Uh, very simple to use. Uh, we do have some, some minor UI fixes there too, but it's working. So please try it as well. So basically, when you download our DAPnet wallet, you can, in a few minutes, create a new asset for yourself and create a pool using this asset and start trading it. Uh, I think it's amazing. And uh, I believe that both the DEX and uh, the Asset Minter will be deployed uh, once we finish the testing, probably sometime next week. It's like almost, almost ready. So that's the good news in the R&D department. So all three of these are now on the DAPnet, correct? Uh, yeah, everything is on the DAPnet. Um, uh, the DEX is still in the closed uh, testing, and we will open it uh, fairly soon once we are confident that it's working. Yeah, but the Asset Minter is already open in the general store, so you can just get started. And if you want to test DEX, just DM me and I will add you to the testing channel. Uh, the reason is just like, it's not like we are, uh, you know, hiding something, but uh, we just want uh, to get some, you know, quality testing for a limited amount of people to avoid uh, noise, repeated questions, stuff like that. And once we are convinced that we are good to go, then we will open it obviously on DAPnet and release it on uh, mainnet as well later. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we had quite a few interesting questions, and obviously you can ask more questions at any time, uh, as usual, in our spaces. Okay. So, uh, what shall we get started with? Do you have any suggestions, Gus? I have, I have a couple of questions that are coming from the community on the bridges and also the yeah. decks, but I'll start with the bridges ones. Uh, there was a question about the bridges being on Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain, uh, but they only saw uh, stuff on the GitHub, I guess, about the Ethereum bridges. So is there any clarification on that? Yeah, so uh, we, we will definitely start uh, with uh, these four assets on Ethereum for, for like a uh, first kind of uh, a period of, 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 kind of adjustment and testing. And then if everything works well, then we can uh, expand uh, both to you know other blockchains, more assets, because in essence, it's uh, exactly the same code, uh, uh, very similar. And also, uh, as I said, once we publish the instructions, anyone can deploy those bridges on, I think, most uh, compatible blockchains, right? So what you need is just uh, uh, Solidity smart contracts, which I believe is either identical or almost identical. Uh, yeah, and uh, it, it can be it can be done. So right now it's just Ethereum for for the next uh, I don't know months or so at least. Wicked. And and with the guide like this would open up the doors for uh, projects. I won't name any names of any projects or or whatever, but this would enable them to spin up their own bridges if they wanted to. Uh, and they could probably tweak like the, the Ethereum bridge to make it yeah. compatible for something like Binance Smart Chain or, or another EVM compatible chain. 
Uh, yeah, th- there's another there's another question that I find really fascinating actually, uh, and I think I know the answer, but I'm I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna avoid trying to give the answer and, and simply ask the question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it says, is there auditability of the reserves locked or under custody on the Ethereum side versus the supply of the wrapped coins on the Beam side? So I guess like the question is, can you make sure that the assets that are meant to be wrapped are there? Uh, yeah. So uh, as you know, the amounts that are locked in the contracts are visible. Um, what? Okay. So there, there are two places uh, that you can immediately, uh, I think, see the supply. One is the application itself, and the other one is the blockchain explorer uh, in like you know something uh, that uh, anyone can or should get access to. Uh, I, I will need to check about the Explorer whether this information is available, and if it's not, we will add it ASAP. Uh, but yes, like uh, in general, this information is completely transparent, both on Ethereum. You can look at the contract and see how many coins are locked there, and you uh, can verify that exactly the same amount was minted in the BIM contract. Uh, it's definitely something that... Uh, uh, you know, is uh, a part of the uh, breach transparency, which is necessary to make sure you know, that it operates correctly, that there was no uh, emission. Uh, but by the way, can, can you hear me well? Because uh, I just noticed that I'm, my, my reception on the phone is not very well, but if it's, if it's okay, I will stay on this network. I can hear you perfectly. Okay, uh, great. Um, okay, yeah, so um, that, that covers that. What else okay. do we have? I want to take a second. We have Phil that's requested. Let me bring him up, see if he has a question. But that makes sense. And, and like the trans, like being able to audit both sides and, and both contracts is obviously very like crucial to a bridge being operated and also like for people trusting the wrapped assets and this kind of thing. So it makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Phil, hello. Hey, man, thanks for letting me uh, on. I greatly appreciate it. I had some questions for you guys. Um, I like the project, but I, I just have a few questions. How would I be able to use um, another protocol such as like Kadena to hide um, privacy and utilize your services? Is that possible with Beam? Um, what What do you mean use Kadena like uh, with Beam? Like in what like breach from Kadena? Like as a side chain almost for to enact for like privacy. Mm. Uh, well. It's uh, not very uh, simple at the moment, uh, even though I personally like Kadena and they like the consensus algo. Um, so th- there are several ways in general that uh, Beam can uh, work with other chains. So uh, like bridges is one uh, possibility. It's not exactly side chain, but you can wrap uh, assets and move them. Uh, that of course depends on the ability to create some sort of smart contract on Kadena that allows, uh, first of all, to lock the assets on Kadena side and also uh, efficiently monitor uh, their, their status because uh, in order to maintain a breach, you need to be sure that uh, you know, the assets cannot be uh, unlocked or spent or you know, b- basically know the state. So that's one, one possibility. Uh, theoretically, what else? What else can you do uh, between, between two completely different chains? I think at, the, at this point, this is uh, the easiest kind of uh, the easiest uh, uh, possibility. The, so another option is to create some kind of um, uh, cross-chain application. Uh, example is uh, like something similar to REN, right? When you have a, a kind of decentralized uh, layer two that has legs in both blockchains and then kind of interacts with them. Um, that's like the only two options I see at the moment. 
Right on. And then question for you, what is the connection between grin and bean? <laughs> uh, so <laughs> uh, both uh, projects uh, started uh, like with the same protocol, which is called Bimble Wimble. Uh, Beam uh, now also uses, in addition to Mimble Wimble, another protocol called Zelantus. By the way, I have a few updates on that as well. Uh, but other than that, uh, and the fact that it, both protocols launched uh, in like, two weeks uh, interval in uh, January 2019, uh, other than that, there is no additional kind of uh, relation. So for a long period of time, uh, Green and Beam were considered kind of competitors because of the same protocol they're using, because of the same kind of privacy uh, orientation. Uh, but there are like mostly differences. Uh, green has unlimited emission, uh, not capped, uh, 60 green per, per, per minute, uh, implemented in Rust, uh, has far less features, uh, does not have a good UI wallet. So yeah, like Beam, Beam has more more cool things to offer and obviously uh, beam also has now smart contracts which you do not have in green so beam can implement confidential DeFi and applications uh a few a few of which are launching this week and uh, uh a lot are already running on uh, on our mainnet can you touch more on the confidential nfts like smart uh, yeah. contracts i mean <laughs> yeah so um one of the interesting kind of uh, problems that uh, arose, uh, especially during the NFT boom, but uh, in general, uh, is um, uh, whenever you are purchasing an NFT, anyone can take a look at your address and uh, your holdings and see uh, what collections you're buying, uh, where you're bidding uh, on, uh, uh, you know, if there is an auction or the prices that you uh, propose, uh, if this happens on decentralized, uh, you know, on, the, on blockchain and not just inside the OpenSea or whatever, this information is publicly available. And um, uh, especially co like large collectors or serious collectors, uh, sometimes they do want to show off their collection, but they don't necessarily want to show everything and you know, uh, then uh, risk uh, anyone being able to trace what they're buying and uh, uh, maybe outbidding them at auctions or spiking their, their trades. So. Uh, the confidentiality of NFT uh, means that, uh, yeah, like uh, you, when you are purchasing an NFT, nobody knows who you are. Nobody knows what else you are holding in terms of which other artworks you are uh, you have purchased. However, at any time, uh, you can prove that you are the owner of a specific work if that's what you need to do. Uh, additional option, which is available just in Beam, uh, is the ability to... Uh, convert your NFT from a smart contract form into a new type of confidential asset. Uh, it's uh, a little bit similar to uh, kind of, you know, buying a picture uh, uh, in the gallery and then taking it home and then selling it confidentially to somebody else, right? So it's not on the market. You can you can trade it completely confidentially. Uh, the reason uh, Beam can do that and nobody else can is because we have this unique feature of being able to convert uh, from a smart contract to a confidential asset uh, on UTXO-based chain and then uh, trade it as a new asset type in your wallet. Right on. Thank you. Sure. Um, great questions. Um, moving on. Uh, let's talk about DEX a little bit. We had a few questions about that, right? Let's see. So first of all, uh, we have a question about the predefined three tiers. Uh, and uh, yeah, so at, at the moment we have uh, uh, three tiers available. 0.3%, um, uh, I think it was like 1% or 3% or something like that. Uh, and uh, it's not possible to create new, uh, new tiers at the moment. So it's the idea that we have uh, obviously borrowed from uh, uh, some more well-known uh, AMM DEX protocols. Um, so we will see how it, like, how it works and uh, what is the situation. And uh, 
in the future we might consider you know adding more more tiers if we, we see that it's necessary but uh, that's what we have decided to start with uh, the reason we didn't allow for a completely custom uh, percentage fee on the pool is to avoid uh, kind of uh, confusion due to huge amount of different pools uh, with different uh, percentages and uh, sp spreading the liquidity across those pools, right? So uh, right now, when you are creating a pool, uh, you can decide what is the risk parameters there. And yeah, obviously, uh, assets on BIM are uh, riskier than you know more established assets somewhere. Uh, so 3% might not be enough. Uh, but... Uh, uh, at least you like you, you will have a clear like understanding where you're trading and obviously the liquidity will flow uh, to the uh, whatever the market perception is uh, of, of the stability of those uh, assets right so uh, naturally I don't expect the liquidity to be equal between the three tiers but rather uh, just like in other um, AMM pools uh, one of those will dominate because like most liquidity will flow there probably the 3% at the moment. This makes sense. Sorry, I was, I was realized, I realized just before I was talking to myself uh, <laughs> on mute. Uh, and, and this leads to a question that I have about like the tiers uh, and would like having more tiers of fees fragment liquidity. But I think yeah. what, you, what you've yeah, just mentioned right. would also be the case as well, that it would kind of converge onto the one with higher liquidity and, and would kind of be a self-fulfilling prophecy and that kind of thing that it gained more liquidity and, and so more traders were using that pool and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely see uh, like how, how it works and what happens. Uh, now, a good, a good question that we had about uh, adding liquidity and how it works, well, um, when you create a new pool uh, for the first time and you deposit both uh, sides, obviously, of the pool, uh, you, you effectively determine the price, right? So if you, let's say, uh, did, like create, I don't know, a Beam and a Tico, and just, you know, as an example, so you set the initial price for the token, and uh, then uh, anyone coming after you can obviously trade at the price that you have set. Uh, and change it, uh, like if they believe that the price should be different, or they can add liquidity at the current price. So you, you cannot change price by adding or removing liquidity. So if, let's say, you want to uh, both change the price and add or remove liquidity, what you need to do is to trade trade first up to the price that you uh, expect and then uh, add liquidity in a separate operation. So, uh, but by the way, uh, the creation of the pool and adding the liquidity is not necessarily an atomic operation. So if you create a new pool, you will first uh, create a pool, wait for the transaction to complete, and then add, add liquidity to the newly created pool. Uh, that's, that's how it works because uh, like it's, it's two separate transactions in, in our implementation. Um, yeah, the UI will, by the way, automatically calculate uh, uh, how much you need to add of each asset uh, depending on the current price in the pool. That makes perfect sense. And and the reason and sorry, the reason that it makes perfect sense to me at least is that I've played around with it. Uh, <laughs> so anyone that's asking questions like this, definitely encourage you to to DM Alex uh, about getting amongst the testing and have a play around because if you're anything like me, it's a lot easier to understand when you're creating yeah. pools and adding liquidity and, and removing it and this kind of thing. There is another question on adding liquidity specifically to a pool. Uh, and they're asking if you need to provide both assets in the proper proportion or whether there will be some built-in buy and sell mechanism for, for providing one uh, asset. And this is... I think there's a few that have it. They mentioned Pancake Swap. I think another one that did this was Balancer. And at least for Balancer, if I remember right, the UI was horrible and many <laughs> people got wrecked because they didn't know that <laughs> they didn't know that it was selling the other half or selling half to 
to change yeah. the asset. They just thought they were providing one of the assets and getting the rest for free or something. Yeah, so at the moment we kept it simple. Uh, so uh, uh, you will need to uh, provide both sides, uh, like you, you need to have uh, both sides in order to um, add liquidity because, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> most of the assets that we're talking about right now do not have uh, many alternative places where you can sell them and then, you know, convert them into uh, the other assets to automatically balance the liquidity that you need to provide. Uh, we hope that in the future the situation will change and then we might consider adding uh, more kind of uh, smart, complicated features of automatically balancing uh, the assets. Yeah, but uh, as of right now, you just need to, to have them. Makes sense. Yeah. And I think like for the for the early iteration is definitely key to like keep it simple, uh, uh, make sure that everything's working well and, and this kind of thing before attaching on more advanced stuff. We have a question back on the bridges from Kexploit. Uh, and the question is is the wrapping of Ethereum via bridge only one way? And yeah, then... so for, for now, the bridges that we have deployed can only bring existing assets from Ethereum to uh, Beam. Uh, but uh, as we mentioned, uh, we are working also on uh, uh, what we call reversed bridges. Uh, they're, they're, they're a slightly different mechanism uh, in terms of uh, which contracts are deployed on which chain, right? So let's say on Ethereum today, uh, you have this uh, kind of uh, lock and uh, unlock mechanism. And on Beam, you have uh, a mint and burn mechanism, right? Or mint and burn me mechanism, rather. So yep. in order to move assets from Beam to Ethereum, we need to just reverse the functionality of the contracts. Uh, and uh, uh, we are working on that. But once again, this will require two new contracts. Um, so they also need to be prepared, tested, and uh, audited. And... Uh, uh, yeah, so obviously they will allow to move Beam and Bmax to Ethereum, but uh, other assets as well, using the same principle of uh, once we create something, we open source it and provide instructions uh, to operate your own reverse bridge that can take your favorite asset from Beam and then mint it as ERC20 on Ethereum. Uh, yeah, and uh, participate in Ethereum ecosystem as well. So it's in progress, work in progress. Wicked. I, I'm going to probably sound very stupid now, but I read this question in a different way. Uh, oh. And my reading, I, I think you understood it correctly, but I didn't. Uh, but So I'm going to ask my way anyway, just to, to make sure. Uh, sure. I read it as like, if I send, if I wrap Ethereum on Ethereum and send it to Beam, now it's a confidential asset. Can I go back the other way and get the Ethereum on Ethereum mainnet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Uh, yeah. Of course, <laughs> yeah. but... Uh, I, I prefaced reason... it with the... With no, no, the it's, it, 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 it's not a one-way uh, uh, deal. Um, oh. uh, however, uh, there is a, a related question, and it's um, the, the question is like... Uh, once we have this mechanism, like the only amount of wrapped Ethereum that will be on Beam is obviously the same amount that will be locked, right? You cannot create new Ethereum, right, on Beam. That's not possible. Yeah. So, uh, um, like if you made, I don't know, uh, profits uh, or whatever in Beam, uh, you will not be able to move out more Ethereum that there is locked in the contract. Right? So it's not it's not funded by any external source at the moment. Yeah. Uh, even even though it's possible uh, to create this kind of uh, mechanism which will uh, provide external liquidity for the bridge. So for example, uh, yeah, I, I have Ethereum. I don't need like I, I I don't want to trade on Beam. That's not what I want to do. What I want to do is provide liquidity for people who do want to trade on Beam. So I just lock my Ethereum on Ethereum and I get some kind of uh, uh, additional fees uh, out of providing Ethereum-based liquidity uh, for Beam bridges. Uh, so that's that's a, an interesting possibility uh, that we might consider adding in the future. Uh, but right now it's just, you know, whatever you're bringing with you, uh, that's what you have. And 
you cannot withdraw more than you brought in total, right? Obviously. Um, Makes that's, total that's sense. The point. I have, uh, I, have yeah. a, I have a kind of related question to this as well. Uh, and and I just thought of it now, so forgive me if the wording's a bit strange. Uh, say I wanted to bridge some Ethereum to Beam in order to sort of make my Ethereum private or use Beam rather more like a mixer. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess the question is what kind of parameters in terms of like Ethereum locked and, and total holders of the wrapped Ethereum and this kind of thing, what kind of factors would play into how much or how good it was as a mixer? Um, well, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting question uh, in terms that, yeah, like theoretically you, you could do that. Like two things that you need to take into account is that first of all, uh, when you are locking funds on Ethereum, right, and you, you're minting a uh, wrapped asset on Beam side, uh, it goes back to you, right? So, so basically, like you you cannot just kind of uh, expect to put your money into the account and then uh, after some time, like uh, I'm sorry, into the contract, into the bridge contract on the Ethereum side, and then basically take it out after a day and uh, you know. Uh, hope that uh, it will somehow be anonymized. <laughs> that's not going to happen, right? So that's that's the point. Uh, in terms of like, yeah, like if you are doing active trading on Beam, it's all confidential. When you're going back to Ethereum, the amount like sh that you withdraw uh, will be traceable again on Ethereum. So uh, that that's I think uh, uh, kind of the most uh, like simplistic answer I can give to this question, right? Uh, how useful it will be for as a mixer? Yeah, it will be a small, small mixer maybe at at, at this time. But once again, it, it depends on like what you're doing with this uh, on beam. For sure, it makes sense. Yeah, uh, it's definitely not. Uh, you know, let, let me say that like explicitly. In, that's not the purpose. The purpose is to bring liquidity yeah. on beam and uh, beam trading. Uh, instruments, um, yeah, that, that's the point. Um, one additional question that I uh, remember, by the way, uh, related to uh, to assets, because one of the things that uh, uh, probably will happen, like once we have uh, a working uh, asset minter and the dex. Uh, is that more um, more assets or like new assets will uh, emerge and uh, be traded on uh, uh, on beam decks and you know that's that's great this is exactly the point uh, obviously some of those assets will be let's say less than perfect right uh, shit or scam or both right uh, and uh, one of the somebody mentioned the ability to like vote to remove assets or something like that. Um, and I would like to uh, say that, first of all, it's not possible. Uh, we are a permissionless blockchain, uh, completely open for, for everyone who, you know, downloads the wallet and the node and buys some Beam to participate. So it will not be possible to forcefully remove an asset, you know, by voting. Um, however, what we want to do, and we started kind of uh, implementing that, is uh, to provide more, um, let's say, community and uh, uh, user-oriented features. Like, for example, uh, like if, if you go into the DEX today, you will see a lot of pools, like on, on DAFNET, obviously, because it's a testing platform. Uh, and uh, right now, like you, you just can filter out the, the pools that you want by uh, specific asset type or like uh, by specific pool properties, like funded or empty. But we want to add like more functionality, and this is where all of your ideas are also welcome. So like favorites, right? I would like to see my favorite pools, the pools that I trade the most. Uh, or maybe in the future we can add some sort of kind of uh, rating mechanism for pools, you know, like stars or likes or whatever. Uh, and then you will be able to uh, 
uh, find more popular pools, more kind of reliable, or just like you have reviews on you know different uh, uh, products, then you will, you will have the same reviews on uh, uh, or similar review mechanism, like or rating mechanism for different assets. Uh, one thing that we need to understand, though, is that because, uh, as you know, everything is anonymous, it can be theoretically uh, tricked. Uh, you know, just somebody can create a lot of wallets. But uh, whatever you are deciding for yourself, like, for example, that's the asset that you trust or don't trust, uh, these preferences will be stored on the wallet level and it will make easier for you to navigate the multitude of different assets, right? So uh, something that uh, we will definitely need to add in the future right now, it's... Uh, uh, it's not there. It's like very simplistic, as I said. Uh, but we we will need to add those. Uh, but no, no forcefully removing assets or voting or whatever. By the way, uh, somebody mentioned something about uh, Beam getting rid of uh, privacy. For for uh, there was some some statement like that. Uh, I think yeah, this was not... yeah. Someone was mentioning this with regards to like the opt-in auditability. I think. Yeah, opt-in auditability only applies to. A, each individual user uh it does not it's not a system feature so you know uh, beam cannot uh, be uh not private uh, ever uh, it's, it's private by default and uh, uh, there is no option to to make it otherwise so uh, yeah that's that's also not going to happen regardless of what else is happening Um, okay, what else we have? Uh -huh. Yeah, great question. Go ahead, ask it, Gus. We had a question. Let me check who it came from. Okay, I can't see. Uh, we had a question that was about us attempting to try and find the right product market fit uh, and oftentimes following like the hype and, and where PMF had been found by other projects and this kind of thing. Uh, and they said, maybe we should focus on our own strength, which is privacy, and try to attract liquidity to our decks by actively promoting private DeFi slash PriFi uh, and are there any plans and thoughts about how to attract such liquidity? Yeah, so it's it's a great uh, uh, great question. Uh, as I mentioned many many times in the previous uh, spaces, uh, this is kind of the focus uh, right now is to kind of find a better, um, more. Um, I would say effective uh, product market fit, uh, you know, for for the technology that we have. Obviously, everything I'm saying is in addition to what we have right now. Yeah, so it's not yeah. like a pivot, like we we used to do this and now we're doing that. No, uh, everything that we have already will remain and uh, provide uh, services that we think, like I think personally, are uh, great, uh, in, both in terms of the technology, usability, and you know, essential. Uh, however, when we talk about attracting liquidity, uh, this is where, like, um, we need to, uh, yeah, like, um, definitely not follow the hype, but uh, first of all, because there is no hype right now, uh, but rather try to uh, evaluate uh, the current market, where it's going, um, and uh, who are those users that we want to attract, like, who are those people, and which kind of services we can provide to them. Uh, I don't have any answers right now, or like at least not good ones. Uh, one thing that um, I think, like uh, when I look at the market today, um, is um, let's say due to all kinds of factors, right? So the economic conditions, uh, the high interest rates, uh, the crypto sentiment in general, the regulation, all, all of this combined. Uh, leads, uh, as in my opinion, right? It's just all, all my kind of thoughts on the subject uh, to uh, less preference uh, for, I would say, like um, uh, speculative assets, right? So, like, I don't see anyone seriously investing in like crazy new token with you know, crazy promises. Uh, on one hand, on the other hand, I do see. 
uh, much more adoption, at, at least uh, kind of adoption in uh, concept, right? But not necessarily uh, like something that you point can point directly, but adoption in terms of um, using blockchain for uh, more like tokenized assets, tokenized trading, right? So things that, uh, once again, I'm not talking about uh, very large institutions, but also in the mid-level, um, people are more used to the idea of trading uh, using all kinds of blockchains. Uh, and what they do need is they definitely need speed. Uh, they definitely need privacy uh, because uh, these kinds of players do not expect uh, just you know anyone to be able to see what they're doing. And I think in this regard, we do have some opportunities, uh, both in using the technologies that we currently have or adding all kinds of interesting layer two or additional components. Uh, the problem or the, the difficulty in exploring this approach, and this is, by the way, brings us to another question, which is also asked about partnerships with other projects, right? Uh, like, uh, yeah, so uh, there are a lot of interesting partnership opportunities out there, but what we need to do is to kind of uh, uh, find a way to, 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 to establish these connections, right? So uh, there are a lot of service providers of different kinds. There are a lot of organizations doing the trading uh, and uh, we are looking for the ways into you know, some of those ecosystems that we can, uh, I believe, provide uh, value for in terms of privacy. So just to kind of sum it up and simplify this, uh, yeah, we will definitely continue to focus on our strengths, which is privacy, usability, and uh, uh, you know, confidential DeFi applications, uh, which we are, I believe, one of the, if not the only project that we you know, can provide this in, in general. What we do need is to find a um, more targeted kind of opportunity to, to attack, right? It's very difficult to uh, do this in general. We need... Uh, design partners, we need to, you know, kind of uh, find the organizations that are willing to explore those options with us. Um, and uh, this is what we're focusing most of our attention on uh, these days, like looking for those uh, interesting ideas, opportunities and uh, corporations. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the important like things on this <laughs> regard as well is, is about the EVM compatibility that's being worked on in the background as well, which will like enable more tooling and, and this kind of stuff to be used for deploying contracts with the privacy that Beam offers. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, definitely uh, something that will bring uh, uh, much more kind of uh, simplicity to rolling out applications, uh, new or existing on Beam, that's for sure. Um, we are pushing to uh, make it happen towards the uh, uh, middle of the year 2023. It will obviously require a hard fork. Um, but it's like uh, not instead, but in addition to that, it would be great to have a clearer understanding of exactly what kind of applications uh, you know will be best suited to uh, to use this infrastructure. So yeah, like you, you can fork existing apps, that's for sure. Um, but I don't think that's the, or, or I, I wouldn't uh, just, you know, settle with that, right? So I, I don't think that EVM is definitely a great uh, addition, necessary one, and uh, it, it will happen. Uh, but I definitely think that we also, in you know, at the same time need to, to look for uh, uh, like more, more interesting use cases that we can uh, attack with with the tech that we have, right, and the ecosystem that we already have. Absolutely, and and also like to back that up, and and this isn't even talking so much about the EVM compatibility, uh, but the likes of the asset minter. This is something that makes it easy for people to mint assets, obviously. And the DEX enables them to put a pull up on, on there and add like the initial liquidity and this kind of stuff. And these projects themselves that are doing that and launching coins and this kind of thing are incentivized to grow their community and, and get people to 
uh, provide liquidity on their coin and this kind of thing. And so I would at least expect like this and, and these tools to help the ecosystem in general, like start to bootstrap liquidity and, and maybe there will be projects or coins uh, or confidential ass- assets rather that start to use some different ways to to like incentivize the bootstrapping of that liquidity and this kind of thing as well. Yeah, I, I think that in general, uh, BIM is, is very well suited for um, all kinds of uh, community building and engagement. I, I mean, like in addition to all the privacy features because of the interactivity and uh, of the wallets. Uh, and one of the things that we uh, are going to roll out in the upcoming desktop release soon is uh, also the messenger, right? So you can have uh, kind of this uh, direct engagement uh, uh, opportunity within your community inside, you know, inside the wallet. You don't have to go outside the wallet for that, which is very nice. Um, and uh, just like as an example, like oh, recently there was this uh, uh, story about, uh, I think it was about die voting. I'm not sure, like uh, uh, Anderson Norwitz, uh, like uh, was it- kind of... Uh, it it was uh I think it was A sixteen like a oh no yeah. I've totally forgotten A Z sixteen or whatever and it was about the launching of Uniswap V three oh, on right. Binance Smart Chain is that the one yeah so yeah yeah I, I think it was but uh, the point was that uh, they have like uh, some amount of tokens and then yeah. uh, they said oh no we're not voting <laughs> with all the tokens we're delegating some of those actually we're delegating the most right so all of these talks. Um, uh, you know, because the voting is uh, not confidential, so everybody knows exactly who is voting with what. Um, like, I think that in many cases, uh, it would be nice to have confidential voting, like somebody is holding the stake and you don't need to know, just like the regular voting in the booth, right? Nobody asks or nobody should ask or like look who you are voting for because yeah. uh, it definitely influences uh, your decision or like uh, you, you can face potential uh, I don't know, problems uh, because of how you are voting for those uh, decisions. Uh, Not to mention the fact that if those, uh, just like in in this case, like if there is, uh, there are financial uh, implications to your vote, uh, you can be bribed, you can be, I don't know, uh, somehow ill incentivized to vote this way or the other. So I think uh, having a good uh, confidential voting uh, platform like on Beam uh, can be useful for many projects. Uh, but once again, so it's a lot of business development, you know, kind of uh, uh, the application does exist, right? So the, we, we do have and we can adapt it to many different uses. Uh, but uh, what we are lacking right now or what we're trying to find is the good approach for uh, uh, one of those markets to really, you know, make a difference. Yeah. Uh, one question on this front as well. We have the BMX voting that uh, and it's been live for a while. When do you expect us to start to have some on-chain votes? Uh, yeah. So as we talked about uh, last time, uh, all of the treasury funds are going to move uh, into the DAO uh, kind of uh, contract uh, vault uh, on-chain. And this means that any, at some point, uh, I I hope like uh, relatively soon, soon, you know, hashtag soon, um, we are working on the procedure to to make all of that happen. Uh, We are interested to making it happen as quickly as possible. So we're not dragging our feet on that on purpose. It just takes a little bit of time. But once the funds are deposited in that contract, it means that any spending whatsoever of those beam will require, uh, you know, an on-chain vote, right? So uh, we will definitely uh, start using it uh, once. once So uh, until now, uh, we could have done that, right? We we did have this, as you said, the contract available. Um, But uh, honestly, we were just too lazy, right? Most of the decisions were taken in the forum or in the community. There were no major controversies. There were no major decisions made. Uh, uh, Most of them were related to uh, specific feature requests in the application. So we didn't have uh, uh, the 
explicit needs to have an on-chain wall. However, once uh, once the beam is uh, in the DAO uh, control, then there is no other way to spend those beam other than on-chain votes because uh, that this is the way, the way of the DAO. Absolutely. And this, I don't know who read the newsletter, but if you didn't, go read it <laughs> after the space and also sign up while you're there. But I don't know who read it and noticed on one of the screenshots... I just remembered, or at least I think I remembered and hopefully didn't make it up. On one of the screenshots, it had like the liquidity provider fee. And I think it had another fee for like the DAO itself. Yeah. And yeah. So this is like in line with that. It would only be like the, the beam that's getting sent over and this kind of thing. It will be any of the like uh, protocol generated revenue from the likes of the DEX or other applications and this kind of thing that are also accumulating back into the treasury. Is this right? Absolutely, yes. So uh, the DEX uh, allocates the portion of the pool fees uh, yep. to, to the DAO, definitely. Um, I don't remember the exact percentage right now, but... Uh, at every trade that you're making, you have a uh, kind of specific breakdown of which part of your uh, fees is going where. Uh, so part of the fee, the larger part, obviously, is going to the liquidity providers to the pool, but uh, there is also a part that's going to the DAO. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we expect like all applications uh, that are uh, produced and uh, integrated with the DAO uh, to be um, allocating a portion of the fees to the DAO. That's definitely uh, one of the main reasons to hold uh, BMAX and to get BMAX uh, in general. So once again, like it's, it will take some time for all of these to kind of uh, uh, be arranged and normalized and, you know, to understand. But uh, it should be absolutely clear that BMAX is the key governance token for everything happening on top of uh, uh, BIM and in BIM DeFi. Yeah. Um, okay, what else we have? I think we had some another question I wanted to address. Let me find it real quick. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so um, just uh, something to uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, re reiterate about the upcoming uh, desktop wallet release. As I uh, said, it's going to include uh, the messaging app, but most importantly, it's also going to include uh, the hardware wallet support. Um, I think a few people already tested it. It looks really, really great and works great. Um, what else? Anything I'm forgetting to update on? I think I, I covered say, most of it. Yeah covered most of it and really like encourage everyone to to get involved in the testing uh don't wait until it's on mainnet and then come with a bunch of feedback best to do it now and and play around also for yourself to get more familiar with them, this kind of thing yeah i really recommend uh, anyone who is um uh you know actively interested in beam to be just like once uh Download the Dapnet wallet. All of the applications are updated automatically uh, in the store. Uh, so, uh, you know, every once in a while, you can go in to see what's new. All of the latest versions uh, of all features are deployed to Dapnet first to be tested. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of um, uh, makes you think about, like, new ideas, new features, even before the, those applications are released. Notice some bugs. Uh, that you can report um, this is definitely uh, you know very helpful for for the project that somebody looks at it from outside because you know people inside are very focused on specific features uh, yeah uh, the last question i would like to address is like just now being posted in beam community about the auditability um, so uh, first of all uh, we do have a uh, an owner key uh, which is kind of a viewer key in a way, right? Uh, I, I wouldn't uh, 
let's say, recommend giving it out to anyone uh, without a specific reason, because after all, it allows uh, the person holding this key to see your holdings on chain. Uh, but we do have this functionality if it's needed. Uh, in terms of uh, proving and verifying transactions, we have transaction proof built into the GUI wallet. Uh, and they also will work with hardware wallet as well. Uh, so yeah, um, we do have this um, this function. Uh, you can also, uh, as you know, export the list of your transactions from the wallet, uh, and you know have them in some uh, kind of CSV form that you can later uh, use for uh, you know tracking your transactions, reporting, or whatever you need to use it for. So these features are pretty well covered. Um, ah, I, I remember the last topic. Uh, <laughs> For real now, but it's important one. Um, so listen, uh, when you're going to uh, go into the DEX, uh, like when you do, or if you're participating in the testing, and you will try, let's say, to withdraw liquidity, right? So you will go into the screen and you will see that, wait a second, that's strange. I have this button uh, to you know, uh, withdraw liquidity from all pools, but I didn't put my liquidity in all of those pools. Like, why, why is it so? Is it a bug? Like, what's happening with that? And uh, the reason for this is that in the current uh, version, like in, in the current implementation, applications cannot see your balance, right? This is a privacy feature. And the importance of it is that if you download some application that you don't necessarily like know or trust, uh, it will not uh, be able to see uh, your personal data, right? Your balance or like what which transactions you made or whatever. Uh, and this is a good thing for privacy. However, it also means that uh, it's very difficult to implement um, kind of uh, these uh, usability features that we're all accustomed to, like the, you know that uh, it shows you, let's say, the max button. I want to provide edge liquidity for the max amount of some token, right? That's not available. Or when you withdraw liquidity, you will need to know exactly or to check this uh, bottom bar that uh, shows your balance because it's you know part of the wallet and then input the amount of uh, liquidity you want to withdraw or add. And one of the suggestions that was uh, kind of passed around is to uh, somewhat relax those restrictions uh, and we can do it in several different ways. So. One of the suggestions, and I will tweet about it. I, I do want to make an official discussion out of it. Uh, but one of those suggestions was to only allow the application like, to, to, to see the assets that are related to it. Now, for DEX, it will not work because you know all assets are can, can be traded on DEX. Uh, another suggestion was to have some kind of official applications or applications that are somehow uh, you know, trusted, and then you will have to, let's say, explicitly agree. Uh, the application will ask for a permission to see the balance, and then if you trust it enough, then you will allow it to do so. Uh, it might require additional setting screens uh, to then, you know, revoke those uh, access rights and, and things like that. So it's a classical trade-off between more, you know, security or more privacy in this case and uh, uh, usability. Uh, it happens all the time, you know, when you have a uh, a 12 digit uh, you know pin code to your i don't know door lock uh, it's very secure but uh, you know uh, uh, until somebody tries to break in you need to enter those 12 digits every time you enter the house uh, which is a nuisance right uh, so this is one of those cases uh, because we made everything so private it's very difficult for the application like it's impossible for the application to know the balance so it cannot adjust the parameters based on the how much of a specific token you're holding um Please think about it, like which would you prefer? And uh, we will do an official uh, kind of uh, uh, gathering of opinions about this subject. Uh, because I believe that for most people, it will be uh, not very convenient uh, when you, you know, cannot like establish, uh, it's it, it make it more difficult to trade when you don't know exactly inside the app how much of each asset you have. So this is the consideration uh, that we uh, want to discuss and decide upon. And it's definitely like a a discussion, uh, definitely a topic worthy of discussion. Like, uh, oh yeah, it was one. Of, it was one of the things that I found like very not frustrating, but I I almost thought to myself like, 
why can't I push max and, and that kind of thing? And then I brought it up and, and you mentioned this and I thought, oh, wow, mm-hmm. like there's a lot of nuance there uh, and considerations that, that need to be taken. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely uh, like uh, we used to encounter those kinds of uh, trade-offs uh, every once in a while. Uh, but now with the you know addition of dApps that you have so much functionality that uh, you know, can can be made much more convenient if the application did know the balance. Now, yeah. once again, you know, it, it's it's like it, it, it's a little bit like those permissions on your phone, right? When you download some application and and it asks for shitload of permissions, and you say yeah, yeah, okay, because you want to use the app, and it's not yeah. good. We don't want to get to this kind of result. No. Um, maybe maybe it can be uh, enabled for specific assets or pools. Let's say. Uh, most of your trades are for I don't know uh, uh, Beam and uh, NPH, right? So that, that's what where you do most of your trading. So you want to uh, allow the application to just know the balance of this specific asset. Maybe it needs to be that uh, you know detailed, uh, but uh, whatever. Like we, we just need to understand what will work best in terms of like usability and uh, being convenient for users. So. Um, we will we will do that discussion as well. Okay, so we are already um, oh actually a few minutes over, uh, but uh, it's fine. It's it's been nice. It's been fun. Yeah. So man, uh, you you get some rest uh, after you arrive to your destination. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I wish you uh, safest uh, of travels and good weather. Um, and uh, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure I'll be lucky enough to to get the ladder of that, but hopefully the travel is safe. I'm not sure about yeah. the weather. Oh man, yeah. As um, always, it's been a pleasure. It it has been. Yeah, thank you very much for everyone being with us here. Thank you for great questions. Uh, the coming week is going to be very intense. The bridges are out. We are going to make an official announcement soon. Uh, the DEX is, is an active testing. Um, more apps are coming, so yeah, it's all it's all uh, very very uh, active, and that's that's great. Stay safe, please. Stay healthy, and uh, we will see you next week. Thank you, guys. See you. Thanks. Bye bye.